Hello and welcome to the Codex Prime Podcast. Uh, I am your host, Victor Omoyo. We are on episode 75. It is Tuesday, May 23rd, 2017, and we are at our two-year anniversary of the Codex Prime Podcast. How do you feel about it, Mr. Bird? Motherfucker, we made it to 75? 75, man. Yeah. Oof. Two thirds of a century. Seventy five right yeah, seventy five episodes in two year in two years. Yep. We still going? Yeah, still going strong, man. You know, it's the two the two man team. You all well, we started as a four man team, now a two man operation. We're still going, we're still doing it. We thank you for watching, listening, supporting us. You know Big thank you. Yeah, big thank you. And uh, you know, we got twenty five more or twenty four more episodes in the tank, plus way more beyond that. We just ain't stopping. <laughs> so get used to us. We ain't stopping. That's right. That's right. Bigger and better things are on the way. That's right. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And uh, Carl, uh, what have you been up to these uh, this past week, man? Oh, well, I did get I did uh, dabble into some reading, got my little, little literary uh, literature on. Okay. Um, okay. This book has been like very popular within about a month. Uh, he, I'm actually a huge fan of this guy. He um, he's co-host of the syndicated Breakfast Club Morning Radio Show, host of MTV's Uncommon Sense, and he's part of the Brilliant Idiots podcast. Mm -hmm. So um, he actually recently re uh, came out with a book called Black Privilege: Opportunity Comes to Those Who Create It. And yes, as me being a fan, I did pick it up. Um, actually a very good book that I really do recommend to people. It's basically his life story and it, um, and it revolves around these eight principles that he learned throughout his life that he has used to become, uh, the success that he is today. He, he um, started from a dirt road in Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Never even heard of Monk's Corner until I even heard of this guy. And, um... You know, he, he was pretty much like a juvenile delinquent, um, been to jail a couple of times, and then he found his calling in radio. And um, a lot of the, yeah, a lot of the principles you can use, you know, you can apply to your life and to help better yourself as well. If, whether you're chasing a dream or, or just simply trying to become a better person, um, you can definitely use it. You know, some of the principles are like, um, that he said were use your truth and nobody can, um, Use your truth against you. Uh, one that he says, one that's called "Put the weed in the bag," which is a reference to Belly, where like he was, where DMX was trying to um, show these, you know, put these young up and coming, well, drug dealers, but like he was trying to get them, you know, you know, trying to get them to come up, but they were just so excited, but you know, oh, I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna be a kingpin and all that, but he said, no, you know, put the weed in the bag. In other words, embrace the hustle, enjoy the hustle. Um, another one that he, another one he used, uh, don't, um, what does it say, don't, don't discredit, don't, um, damn, what, what, I'm just trying to find the right words. Don't dismiss an opportunity just because there's not a paycheck to it. Like, that's part of the put the weed in the bag uh, uh, principle. And um, there's so so many other ones. Give people credit for being stupid, even yourself. Um, like so many, you know, so many others, and not to mention his life story. So I mean, I, I I urge everyone to just pick it up or read it, borrow it from somebody, just read it, and you you will enjoy it. I guarantee you will enjoy it. And um, and who wrote this book? Charlemagne the God. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead and be. You're so close-minded, him because but. <laughs> I really believe that you could learn a thing or two. One thing that did stick out to me was um, a section called 168 hours. So that means like if you're truly like passionate about something or is just some or your your dream, your goal, there's never you can always have time. You can make time for for whatever it is that you're passionate about or whatever it is that you you're willing to pursue. There's 168 hours in a week. Yep. You know, you can't you can put it in if you really want it. That That's is. right. So yeah, I've been uh so I just finished that. And um also uh I I told my uh cousin Tyrene that um she posted this on her Facebook and I told her I would touch on this. And this uh pretty kinda pissed me didn't piss me off, but I was highly upset about it. 
it's the uh, Lifetime movie, so there's already a flag, red flag right there. Uh, Search for Neverland, it's another Michael Jackson biopic. It's based on a book by uh, one of his bodyguards from his last days. And um, it just basically tells Michael Jackson's life from his point of view. And um, just like pretty much any other Lifetime movie, it looked awful. Ugh. Awful. First off, like, there should not be any more Michael Jackson biopics. I agree with that. Okay, the Man in the Mirror one starring Flex Alexander was off, was god awful. Fuff. I mean, and it, 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 you know it's bad if me and Victor can agree that it sucks. It does. I mean, that's. It's like something that. The Man in the Mirror by Flex Alexander, that's a movie. I'm pretty sure there are clips available on YouTube. But the whole it, movie it, is on YouTube, last I checked. Okay, well, if you're if you're morbidly curious, take some time to watch at least like 10 minutes of it, and you'll come away flabbergasted as to how this even exists. Oh my god. It does. I mean, Flex Alexander and the Michael Jackson make... No. Mm -mm. It, it was bad. The mm. best... The only Jackson movie that was made and that was actually really good was the Jackson's American Dream that came out in 1990. For one, Jermaine, Jermaine was the head honcho in that movie. Mm -hmm. And like, he should, it was honest mm -hmm. to some degree. And, it's, and the only person who can portray Michael Jackson correctly, well, big ups to Jason Weaver. He actually did a good job as young Michael. Mm -hmm. But as adult Michael, Wiley Draper. He's the only one who can do it correctly, and now he's dead. No. Oh, he, he died of leukemia like a year or two after the movie came out. Oh, R.I.P. Yeah. Wow. So that just goes to show, like, it was, like Michael Jackson just cannot be portrayed. I mean... History is showing us. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> yeah, she, come on, give me a good Michael Jackson performance. Not by Michael. Hmm. Other than... And other than the two that I met, that I mentioned, yeah, I don't think there are any to be honest. I mean, you can make documentaries for sure. I'm yeah, like, I'm all for documentaries. Yeah, that could have been a documentary. Yeah, they got enough footage. Oh, absolutely, and I really enjoyed This Is It. Uh, yeah, but what? Who was in This Is It? Michael Jackson himself. It's, okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah, I, don't, I can't see. It's just like Vince McMahon, I can't see anybody playing Michael Jackson. No, he he was one of a kind. Icon, it just you can't. It just cannot be duplicated. Mm. So, and it was just and, and Chad Coleman, who played Tyrese from The Walking Dead, is in it also. Uh, he plays one of the bodyguards, and it just and the guy who played Michael, who is the self-proclaimed, I think his name's like Avi or something. I know I just showed it to you not too long ago, but mm -hmm. it, he's the self-proclaimed best Michael Jackson impersonator, and he even in he looks horrible. Yeah, I thought it was a Puerto Rican woman playing Michael at first, but, yeah. Hmm. I mean, you know what's funny with Lifetime? I mean, it, I mean this, this should be like an unofficial uh, question of the week. Like, what is the worst Lifetime movie you've seen portraying a musician? Aaliyah. Aaliyah? I, I, oh, man, I remember Twitter was just going Oh, off Twitter on. went in. And I enjoyed Summer of Aslan. I had to go in on Summer of Aslan. It was amazing. It was... I had fun. Now, is it true that in the Aaliyah movie, but I've heard about this. I haven't seen it per myself, but... I actually wasted my time on watching it. Like, is it true that they, they, they didn't have the rights to use any of Aaliyah's songs? No, they didn't. So how come... The only song that they used was, um... There was two of them. At Your Best... Mm -hmm. And that's only because it's originally by the Isley Brothers. Mm -hmm. Yep. And her rendition of Marvin Gaye's "Got to Give It Up." Wow. I mean, how, how are you gonna make an Aaliyah movie? The family wasn't even behind it. Oh, well, there you go. Timberland and Tr Timberland and Missy weren't behind it, and the whoever and everybody that they cast looked nothing <laughs> like them. Now, granted, I did slander the New Edition movie before it came out, because mm -hmm. none of the guys except for maybe. The kid who played Ronnie DeVoe looked anything like the guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the kid who played Bobby Brown as well. Yep. Young Bobby Brown and um, older Bobby Brown. Yep. Ralph, Ralph was a meh. 
Mm-hmm. You know that, yeah, um, Brashia, Brashia Gray, he picked up on Michael Piven's like mannerisms and character, mm-hmm. but you know, they didn't look like any of those guys. But it was still a great movie. Why? Because the actual people were involved. Yeah. And just, I, I know this will be another lifetime bomb. As a matter of fact, the link that I read into it, it was the biopic that nobody wanted. Wow. Well, oof, that's like truth in advertising. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Oh, Somehow, man. some way, I would not be surprised if a lot of people watched it because hmm. the I think oh I think until new edition the Aaliyah biopic actually like was one of the highest rated biopics, TV biopics, at that time. Damn, that's a shame. Yeah, it's funny. Like when lifetime. Oh, Wendy Williams, gosh, she caught hell for it. Oh man! Oh, I heard, she was I heard behind it. Yeah, she was behind the whole thing, and she caught hell. Hmm. And I just sat back, can just kick back and just say, "Hey, that's what you get." If the family wasn't involved, you should have just backed out out of respect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like a Lifetime. You know, they used to be known for making man-hating movies, and now they make crappy biopics of musicians. Uh, Aaliyah was kind of a man-hating biopic because oh. of the whole R. Kelly thing. Mm-hmm. Well, R. Kelly's a pedophile anyway, so. I mean, I mean, it was what it was. I mean, Jesus Christ. They that's mean, a whole nother podcast. Yeah. That's a whole nother episode. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I remember... Did yeah, you see the tape? The tape? Did you see the tape? Of R. Kelly? Yeah. I did see the tape. Yeah, it, me too. It was, Watching in school. Yeah, I remember it came out like 2002, I think. It was a, It was 2000. Yeah. yeah, it was around. Yeah, no, nah, it was about 2002 because of the Best of Both Worlds album. Yeah, and then Jay-Z, like, quickly distanced himself from R. Kelly after that album was released because of the tape. Yeah. Like, I remember I remember that whole fiasco, like, it was disgusting to watch. I mean, and not, and not only that, and not only that, like, there were a lot of people who were like, oh, 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 R. Kelly is so wrong, he's, oh, oh, fuck R. Kelly, I'm not gonna listen to his music. That later that same year, when the Ignition dropped, those oh, sa- that Chocolate Factory was the album. I <laughs> those same he mother- put it. De- yeah, listen, you can't even deny. You cannot deny that that Chocolate Factory album wasn't bomb. Step in the name of love. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, that's a Chicago thing. That's a pl- that's a party mainstay to this day. I mean, it, oh, I play that at parties and folks get loose. R. Kelly uses a 14-year-old girl as a urinal, but and, 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 people, and people are rightfully outraged. But then as soon as he drops a, a, an, an album full of, I suppose, good music, all is forgiven. Get the fuck out of here. I mean, people are... So I wouldn't go that far to say all is forgiven, but we just like the music. You can't... I mean, but it's like, okay, you're in... T- you get in trouble, mm-hmm. you, put out a, you put out a bomb-ass album, and it kind of just blows over. And nah. he still didn't get a credit for it. Now, with that type of thing, you can't, you cannot separate the artist from the crime. I mean, R. Kelly is a. Oh yeah, he's always affiliated with. But yeah. I'm just not gonna deny. I'm just not gonna deny that Chocolate Factory album was amazing. Well, it, amazing in the sense that he had the balls to make it. When it was probably it was already, you know, yeah. I mean, depending on the timeline of when it was made, yeah. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. Some some people, some fans are willing to forgive anything, and they're like, it's like worse. We than... forgave Michael Jackson when he first got acquitted. Listen, listen. I we don't, did. I don't believe it. We did. I don't believe it. Those, those are, those are nothing but shameful allegations by by people trying to get money off the king of pop. All right, all right. Shame on y'all. And then another kid happened. And then a an, yeah. Look, listen. Sometimes he look. actually fought. He actually fought it and won. But, I mean, people still forget, people still don't forget Michael Jackson. There's people still who hate him. Bill Cosby. Well, he, people hate Bill Cosby. Well, Bill Cosby's different because Bill Cosby is a serial rapist, right. as we've as we've established. Off the, the trial, show. he goes to trial next month. We shall wait and see. Listen, I've lost respect for Bill Cosby ever since he talked smack, talked mad shit about the black community back you in two thousand four. You've been saying the same shit no, since since two thousand and four. You say the same. I do shit. not. How, what are you talking okay, about? Okay, okay. How about this? Oh, you. Okay, look. All the faces that you just made when I was talking about reading reading um Charlemagne's book. Right. That's pretty much equivalent to what you just said. Okay, how about this? Read the book. I will let you borrow the book. Okay, I will sit and read the book. I will keep an open mind about Charlemagne the God. There's actually a pretty legit reason why. It's actually more. It's, it's actually an empowering, empowering why he called, why he goes by the God. 
Okay. All right. All right. I'll, I, I, will, I will read his book. I'll take the time to read it. But and I want and I want you to go over it on the podcast. Sure. All I, right. It's documented. All right. It is documented. Um, okay. But but I will say, you know, getting back to my point real quick, yeah. I lost respect for Bill Cosby back in two thousand and four when he made that shitty ass pound cake speech. Blaming poor black people and the poor black community for bl- blaming them for their prop for their own problems as well as causing the the ills of society at large. So fuck Bill Cosby, talking mad shit about the black community, running them down for years, and then you have over sixty women coming out out of the woodwork, you know, accusing Bill Cosby for drugging them and damn near raping them. He's they're a serial. All accusa- they're all accusations, though. He's a serial rapist. They're all accusations. He's been talking mad shit about the black community for years, and you know what? The chickens have come home to roost. Yeah, I said it. Yeah. And you know what? The Bill Cosby... And, and for the record, <laughs> the, Bill, the Cosby Show is one Victor of... Victor Ritt. The Cosby Show is one of the most overrated sitcoms oh, in history. Oh, you need to get smacked. You need to get smacked. I love the Cosby Show. I will say this, though. Felicia, Felicia Rashad as Claire Huxtable, goddess. Absolutely. Felicia Rashad is a goddess. She is a goddess, and she's a great actress, but I will say this. The Cosby Show is one of the most overrated sitcoms in American television history. Victor O'Miles said that. You can document it. Send your hate mail at codexprimepodcast at gmail.com. Oh, I can't wait to read that. You know what? Let's move on, because we got a big, we got a couple yeah. of big subjects on it. All right. I'm all set. <laughs> what the hell have you been up to? Uh, well, as for me, um, I had a wrestling-filled weekend. Damn, um, now we can't wait. Well, we might as well just go to the b- news and headlines. Well... Well, which which we'll which we'll get into which we'll get into that was that was the bulk of my weekend. But I will say that uh, I did I did manage to uh, pick up a couple of uh, Blu-rays. Uh, actually, today, in fact, oh. I, I did pick up uh, the so far the best film of 2017, Get Out. Uh, boom! With a star- Who's hit me, man. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Written and directed by Jordan Peele exceptional film i can't wait to dig into it more uh on the podcast yeah there's an alternate ending too oh really nice oh, yeah, yeah i saw it in the commercial today oh wow okay so. yeah i mean get out i will do di- I'll, I'll dig into it more perhaps on another like victor's corner in the future uh but I, I picked that up um i'm also uh trying to pick up logan which came out today on blu-ray uh there's a there's a three different uh editions blu-ray editions i'm trying to get the steelbook edition from best buy Packaging. Yes, in, yes, indeed. Fancies of fancies of packaging. I, I will get that uh, uh, this week, probably tomorrow. Um, and beyond that, I've been catching up on my uh, uh, comic book grind. I start. I finished a saga, a uh, volume six. That's all. You, you, nope. Not, that's all you got to say. And I need to read seven. That's all I will say. I mean, I will. I will get to. I'll, I'll get to reading uh, volume seven shortly. Um, and I will also. I also have uh, the first two. Uh, graphic novel volumes of Wonder Woman, uh, the uh, Rebirth edition. So I will, of course, I will read that in time for the upcoming Wonder Woman movie coming out on June 2nd. Fingers crossed. I hope DC doesn't mess this one up. Fourth time's the charm, right? It's supposed to be third time's the charm. Well, you, we gotta count Man of Steel. Remember Man of Steel, Batman uh, vs. Superman? Mm, well, in that case... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, watch. I mean, of course, watch. If the movie, if the movie turns out, turns out to be booty butt cheeks, watch John Haponic, you know, resident DC uh, fan and Marvel hater of the show. Watch him give it lavish praise, regardless. So, you know, you know, I would like to. I would, I actually am looking forward to that email. Me too. I am. But uh, yeah. The, I, I, other than that, I. Music break. Apparently, somebody's <laughs> driving by the street uh, playing a uh, Mary J. Blige. Hey, what's the 411 album? Four, hey, that that is a classic. Hey, so, hey, that, that, I, I'm not knocking them for it. I, I ain't knocking them either. I mean, Mary J. Blige, queen of hip hop soul. But uh, yeah, besides that, I haven't been up to much. Uh, just a wrestling-filled weekend, which we'll get into as our main discussion: both NXT Takeover Chicago and Backlash. Uh, yeah, but yeah, more on that later. Uh, we got a bunch of news and items of interest in the geek world. Lots of lots of lots of hot fire that dropped uh, this past week. Yeah. So uh, you want to kick it off? All right. Tom Hardy to star in Venom movie. Mm. Hardy will star as Eddie Brock with Ruben Fleischer. I hope I said that right. Yep. Please. Who was who um, directed Zombieland? Yep. I actually just watched that today at work. Really? Yeah. Nice. Love that movie. 
It is good. Bill Murray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the film comes out on October 5th, 2018. Then it will be the first film in Sony's own separate Marvel Cinematic Universe. So this film is not considered as a spin-off of the actual Marvel Cinematic Universe from Marvel Studios. Sony's Marvel Universe will also include Black Cat Silver, and Silver Sable film. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Tom Hardy as Venom, as Eddie Brock. I mean, great casting yeah, right there. I can't pick. I can't picture anybody better. Yeah, definitely miles ahead of a Zac Efron. Definitely, yeah. Like, Zac Efron would have been another freaking like, Tom for Grace. Yeah, he would have been. But uh, Tom Hardy, he definitely has that, that he heart. He has, he's the Venom. Mm -hmm. he, he is Venom. Like, face-wise, I would have chose Brock Lesnar, but Brock Lesnar talks higher than me. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> I... Don't let him hear you say that, though. <laughs> What's he gonna do? I know, put you in a Kimura lock. And... I will sue that motherfucker so quick. Yeah, if you survive. I'd be alright. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Tom Hardy's that's great casting. Um, the the movie actually is gonna be like a like an action horror movie. They're trying to make it an R-rated uh, film, according to reports. Good. And plus, it's an actual. It's actually gonna be separate. It, what I find interesting is interesting is that it's gonna be separate from the actual MCU. It's gonna be part of Sony's. Marvel Cinematic Universe? Well, why not? 20th Century Fox has their own screwed up timeline of a cinematic universe for X-Men. Well, yeah. So, I mean, shit, why not? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in seeing what Sony's, uh, what Sony's take yeah, on Yeah, I'm a Marvel be. guy, so I'm gonna watch it regardless. I'm a nerd, so I'm gonna watch, yeah, I'm a nerd all together, so I'm gonna watch it regardless. Yeah, I'll watch it too, you know, even though I'm, like I said, I'm kind of fatigued on the whole, uh, genre. Well, particularly MCU, really, but... You know, I mean, with well, you got three of them now. Oh well, yeah, it's three. Three cinematic Marvel Cinematic Universe is the main one. Mm -hmm. Fox's X Men, yep. which is technically a Marvel Cinematic Universe, as yeah. screwed up as that timeline is. Mm -hmm. And now we got Sony. Yeah. Well, um, I just hope that uh, I th hope that the Tom Hardy film will definitely be worthwhile. I mean, I th I'm pretty sure it will be. And if it's if it's R-rated and horror, and if it's a horror genre, then hey, that piques my interest even more. There you go. Yeah. And yeah. this uh, Black Cat Silver Sable film, hey. That'd be dope. Hey. That'd be dope. Mm. So. Yeah. Uh, other other casting news: uh, Tom Holland, uh, better known as Spider-Man, Peter Parker, he is cast as Nathan Drake. In the upcoming Uncharted movie, uh, the movie will actually be a prequel, as it will be based on the early chapter of Uncharted Three: uh, Drake's Deception, uh, which uh, a teenage Nathan Drake uh, first meets his mentor Victor Sullivan. So it's going to be based on that portion of that game. And Sean Levy, who direct, who is one of the directors of Stranger Things, is directing the Uncharted Uncharted film. And Sony is currently looking for a screenwriter uh, for this movie. Now. Unique approach, I think. That I'm okay with. So when the first when the news first broke out, I'm like, the kid's twelve. You know? <laughs> it's like, Nathan Drake's gotta be about like forty something. Like Yeah, it's like in his like Like late thirties, early forties. So I'm yeah. like the kid is twelve. And he's like twenty, I think. But yeah. No. But like I I know I didn't see it, but now that they um now that they got, I've gotten more details into it, mm -hmm. I'm okay with it now. Yeah, and I think it's a unique uh, approach to take, you know, uh, a, a young Nathan Drake. Yeah. You know, kind of reminds me of, like, young Indiana Jones. And I, 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 would love to see, I, would, I would love to see who they cast as Victor Sullivan, as Sully, because that would be... I can't even think of anybody. Oh, man. Not off the top, not off the top of the head. I may have to do some research and play mm. Uncharted again, which I don't mind. I love that game. Oh, yeah. And um, also, uh, also, um, uh, originally, uh, a Who lot plays of... Who Sam? Sam? Um, Nathan Drake's older brother. Troy Baker. Uh, he's like a, he's like a famous uh, video game voice actor. He played uh, Joel in The Last of Us. Oh, uh, no, I'm talking about who would play him in the movie. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't think it'll... Oh, oh yes. Yeah, he's a big part. He's a big part of that. Yeah, if they, if they decide to, I, I, well, according to this report, it's mostly based on, it's primarily based on Uncharted Three, the prologue, but it, but they might include elements of Part Four. I mean, if since it's focused on a teenage Nathan Drake, so if they do cast Sam, 
then yeah, it's, it's interesting. Maybe one of the kids from Strange Stranger Things, maybe they'll, they'll be a bit older. I don't know, but they're lo they're even younger. I don't know. I mean, kids 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 age fast. So maybe they can cast uh, who played whoever plays Carl on The Walking Dead. Oh, um, Chandler Riggs. Yeah, maybe that. I don't know. I don't know. He's about the same age. Sam is a little. Sam's older. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, they'll figure it out. But hey, I think it's an interesting take. Um, I, I know a lot of fans for years have been wanting to see Nathan Fillion cast as Nathan Drake, because like that role is like pretty much like tailor made for him. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, but um, but I think I'll, I'll get the fact that this is a different approach. So I am looking forward to seeing what they have in store, and hopefully this will be the video game uh, ba based movie that is actually good. And I know we've, we've been saying that for years, but yeah, we have. Yeah, but but like I said, the the games have a great pedigree, and Sony, you know, obviously they're the publishers and developers of the publishers of the games. So, hey, maybe they'll maybe they'll uh, overcome the curse. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, and then universe. Another news: Universal Monsters Universe, no, now known as the Dark Universe. The Dark Universe kicks off with the Mummy reboot, starring Tom Cruise, and will star Johnny Depp as the Invisible Man and Javier Bardem as Frankenstein's monster. Mm. The mum The Mummy stars Russell Crowe as as Doctor Jekyll and Sofia Boutella as the Mummy. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's gonna lead to Doctor Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Creative heads of the Dark Universe are Alex Kurtzman, Chris Morgan, Christopher McQuarrie, mm -hmm. and David Coet. I hope I said that right. I can't pronounce shit. Yeah. <laughs> the next film in the Dark Universe will will be Bride of Frankenstein, directed by Bill Condon for a for February 14th, 2019 release. Mm. Bill Condon, Bill Condon. Uh, he directed, uh, well, most recently, Beauty and the Beast. Okay. Yeah, and he also directed Dream Girls. All right, yeah, I, I just had to put, uh, had to associate something with the name. The yeah. name did sound familiar. Mm. Yeah, so the Dark Universe. I was kind of hoping Johnny Depp would play Dracula. That would have been good casting, actually. I mean, he's already a makeup. He's like a makeup, makeup fiend. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's like, and he nails a lot of those roles. He does. I mean, even though Jack Sparrow is a completely obnoxious role, um, right, it's popular. It, it's just it's popular. I already know. You know, you don't like Overkill and stuff. But mm -hmm. I mean, if it's that's just for, that this new one coming out is for the check. It is definitely because they know people are gonna go because it's such a huge franchise. People mm -hmm. are gonna go and see it. Yeah, but I I, I do like this. Uh, this this casting, I mean, uh, Javier Bardem as Frankenstein's monster, Johnny Depp as the Invisible Man. Um, I'm mean, I'm a little intrigued to seeing what uh, this dark universe of Universe Studio, Universal Studios classic monsters movie monsters will be, because um, I know that also includes uh, the Wolfman as well. Um, you can cast anybody for that. Wolfman could be CGI shit. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm I'm kind of interested, even though even though this Mummy reboot kind of looks a little meh to me. I don't know. It's like it's. It's missing that little something, that little, that oomph. It's like Luke the Vandross, Jerry Curl just can't quite, his yeah. curl just can't quite curl right. Yeah, it just can't just quite curl can't right. Just can't get that. Can't get that S, just can't, yeah. get, can't get that S, that, that S curl right. But um, who knows, maybe maybe the mummy will be a, a surprise hit. Because um, I'm, I'm a fan of Tom Cruise, and he always, he always does action movies really well yeah you know? collateral is actually one of my favorites oh, very yeah. slept on i'm very slept down one yeah collateral is definitely one of my favorites too um yeah i'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, universal brings to the table with this dark universe i mean even though i i do feel like cinematic universes are reaching they're, out that, they're that, a that, thing now they are a they're a thing now yeah the, but it's reaching that overkill point overkill point um no, they're just a thing now i mean first comic books now movie monsters and then then, then you, what's next like a fast and furious universe with a bunch of spin-offs and really it's um, game I mean, of thrones game one well game, game of thrones yeah they have a unit well it's a self-contained one it's a yeah, television it's series well it's different because it's self-contained yeah but i don't know but you know what i'm, I'm, I'm keeping an open mind Hopefully, uh, hopefully the mummy will be a surprise hit, and hopefully the this will be a good indication. I have pointed out. I probably said it la last week in the show, but I really one of those scenes in the trailer, Tom Cruise did look like Nathan Drake. 
He did. Hey, you know what? Maybe if they cast that like as an old, like maybe as some spin-off, like an older Nathan Drake. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe he's too big I, of a face to play Nathan Drake. I guess I don't know. But he but he looked a lot like him. He did. So on to the next news. Uh, Red Dead Redemption Two delayed to spring 2018. It was originally scheduled for fall 2017 release date, but Rockstar wants more time to work on the game. They're just making too much money off of Grand Theft Auto. That's what I think. No, I don't think so much as well. They they're making money hand over fist with GTA Online. Yeah, alone. that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah, but I think with Red Dead Two, I'm I'm fine with the delay if they need more time to you know fine tune it to make it the perfect game as it should be. It I'm I'm for it. Well, in that case, it better be. When was the last Red Dead? Twenty ten. That's eight years. I know, and it's one of my all time favorite games. Yeah. Okay. Last time you waited that long for a game, it was what the Last Guardian. Yeah, the Last Guardian. I think yeah, it was it was about eight years because I remember first hearing you, about it. So yeah, and like, didn't that break your heart? Because I barely you were so amped up for it, and I barely heard you mention it. Yeah, by the time the by the time the game came out, I just didn't give a shit anymore. I saw I saw it on a on a shelf at Best Buy. I'm like, oh, okay, that's nice. I could have sworn you got it. No, I, I didn't buy it at oh. all. And plus, like reviews weren't were very mixed on it, and I've seen and I can see why. Damn. But but yeah, Red Dead Two. Um, yeah, hey, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, if if Rockstar needs more time to work on it, I'm all for it. Exactly. Um, but like I said, eight years. This game better be fire. I think it. I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it will be. I mean, Rockstar hasn't failed yet. Um, uh, other other news on the docket, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, Sir Roger Moore uh, passed away uh, on Tuesday uh, today at the age of 89 uh, from a short battle with cancer. Um, he was the uh, he was his best known role was James Bond. Uh, he played the, the role from in 1973 from 1973 to 1985. He starred in seven 007 films, which makes him the still the longest tenured actor to play the role. And one of his most famous roles before that was uh, uh, Simon Templar in the TV show The Saint, which aired in the 1960s. And uh, also, he was well known for his UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador work as well. So he was very, very, very well known on the humanitarian front as well. So Sir Roger Moore, rest in peace. Uh, one of my favorite Bond films was The Spy Who Loved Me, which is uh, part of my James Bond collection. Uh, in, in my view, my favorite, but the best of the Roger Moore Bonds. Uh, but you can also check out Live and Let Die and The Man with the Golden Gun as two good ones. And of course, Moonraker too. Moonraker. First James Bond by Sean Connery, correct? Yep. Okay. And um, oh, and who can forget Octopussy? That's a that's a that's a great film too. <laughs> well, great title really, but film eh, it was enjoyable. So yes, Roger Moore, R.I.P. Rest in peace. And uh, next headline here. Oh Jesus! Uh, yeah, I saw that on the dock. I was saving that for you. Uh, the Resident Evil film series is already getting a unnecessary and unwanted reboot. Uh, Martin Moskowitz, who's the chairman of the board at Constantine Film. Uh, the production company who that owns the rights to Capcom's survival horror series confirmed that a reboot of the whole film series is in the works. Uh, there's no word on who will star and direct the film. And the uh, Resident Evil film series concluded with the Resident Evil The Final Chapter uh, this past January with uh, Mila Jovovich and Paul W.S. Anderson. Uh, no. I don't, we don't need a reboot. Just let... You go ahead, take it. This one's all you. Let franchises rest. Let 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 the dead rest. All right. No pun intended. You know. But still, the fact is, is that wow. What is that? <laughs> I know. I know. The, the 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 fact is, is that the the Resident Evil movies, all of them are complete schlock, and they're they're all hot garbage for one thing. Two. You, you you don't Hollywood. You don't need to reboot every single series. Resident Evil. I mean, nobody's. I don't think. Who's checking for these movies? Who who really is? I mean, um, um, unless unless they have an audacious idea of rebooting the whole franchise and taking an entirely different spin, much like the video games did with Resident Evil Seven, I can see them doing that. And if that case, then that kind of, that would sound genuinely intriguing. Like if you rebooted it as like a like a like a down and gritty survival horror tale without without the trappings of Umbrella and like outlandish monsters and you know beefed up soldiers. 
then maybe like if you took a Resident Evil 7 approach, okay. But like rebooting the whole series right after this one has just concluded is is just extreme overkill, man. It's like it, it's just contributing further to this whole oversaturation of reboots and universes and, and that's stuff that we don't really need. It's, it's just shoving us down our throats, man. I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm just t tired. And, and, and mind you, and mind you, video game movies based on video games t tend to suck. So why would you reboot a franchise that's based on a video game, which I, I, I don't want, I don't want, I can't deal. I'm tired, Carl. I, just don't watch it. I, I, I need a blanket and I, and I need to go to sleep because I don't want to talk about this anymore. Okay, well, we'll just move on then. Cool. I'm for <laughs> it. All right. Arnold Schwarzenegger returning to the Terminator franchise. Oh, Schwarzenegger Jesus. confirmed that he will. <laughs> he will be in the next Terminator film, which is being produced by James Cameron. At least Cameron's involved. Yeah, he's involved, but you know what? Talk about another franchise that needs to be put underneath the ground. The Terminator franchise is like the Undertaker of 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 why? Franchises, you see, you right? all, okay, you see, you do this on purpose. <laughs> you do this on purpose. You, but you, you better ch change the analogy. You started, change the analogy. You started change with, the analogy. You started change with so the analogy. Much I will keep going with youth, this. <laughs> so much fire, so much energy, and then over the years. You, you, it, over the years, you're starting to sag. You're starting to show your age. But then, when you're older, you actually do put out some good matches. Like I said, 25. WrestleMania 25 against Shawn Michaels. It is the greatest WrestleMania match of all time. Okay, 26. Wasn't 25 caliber, but dope. Yeah. Was... He Up until 30? Between 25? I, I would say no. I would say between 24 and 30, he stole the show. Yeah, but, well... Okay, I'll change the analogy because like Undertaker was stealing the show for the at WrestleMania for the most part, but the Terminator franchise, um, it, it is it, it is overkill, and um, I think with Terminator Genesis, I mean that was that was a film that actually uh, that actually that actually uh, forced the studio to more or less shut down the whole franchise, shut down their uh, intended plans for future sequels to that film. Right, and then they made like they actually made like more money. Um, Worldwide, yeah, yeah, and, and it, that's what's keeping it going. Yeah, and it flopped domestically. So, you know what? As far as I'm concerned with this this Terminator franchise, th 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 all you need to watch from this franchise is Terminator One um, and two. two. That's canon. Everything else is just whatever. Whatever. It's it's to me it's non-canon. It's just I did, like I honestly didn't even I I I remember going to the movies to see um, three, three, and was... I don't even remember it. Yeah, it, it, it three is quite forgettable. But no, what was even more forgettable was Terminator Salvation. That that was useless as a story uh, on a story level and everything. It was, it was just not happening. But Schwarzenegger returning to the franchise, even with Cameron's involvement, Cameron himself could actually write and direct it. I still would not be interested. I mean, this franchise, you know, it, it, the, the the story's already been told with parts one and two. You can say what you will about the sequels or the the Sarah Sarah Connor Chronicles, whatever. Let it die. Let it die. It's like you've, you've been around too long. Like The Undertaker. You saw what happened at 33. You've been around way too long. You need a blanket. You need to retire. Go to sleep. Almost like, oh my god. Grandpa wandered into the ring. Somebody help him. He doesn't know where he is. <laughs> but, yeah, he ain't, he ain't stabbing me. But still, yeah, Terminator, no. Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger, just just stick to stick to doing anything else but the Terminator franchise, man. Please, for my sanity. You want to be governor? Do that. Yeah, be governor. <laughs> Shit. I think I don't think he can. Can he run for governor? Can he run for governor again? I'm not sure he can. I don't know. I have to look it up. But but yeah, do something like, like count, count your money at home. Do another sequel to Pumping Iron. Just don't do another Terminator franchise <laughs> sequel. Jesus. Oh. Black Lightning has released a trailer this past week. Black Lightning. Uh, on the CW. It's, a, it's not officially part of the CW Arrowverse, according to, um, according to uh, producers. 
um, although it's although the, although they, I forgot who said it specifically, but um, this person from CW said that it's not part of the Arrowverse yet. So they might build to it, or it just might remain its own separate en entity. But uh, I don't know. What do you think about this Black Lightning uh, trailer? <laughs> DC trying to do Luke Cage. Why? Because he's because he's a black hero, racist. No, it just had the look to it. It's like they try, I'm like I'm watching it. First of all, the only reason I'm like first of all I'm I'm going crazy trying to figure out because the guy who played Black Lightning, he the guy who plays him looks so familiar. Then I had to look it up. And I realized it was Scooter from Living Single. Oh shit, that was him. Oh yeah. my god. Scooter from Living Wow. Whoa. Damn. The 90s have never left. What? Listen, 90s were the truth. Yeah. Kids, just look up anything from the 90s. Mm. They were the truth. But anyway, and I was just like, I was just watching it and I'm just getting that feeling. I'm just like, wow, it really looks like they're just trying to get a rebuttal for Luke Cage. That's a, at least that's just the feel that I got of it. Um I didn't I, I didn't I didn't think of it that way. I mean, I thought it looked I mean, it it, it kind of looks a little generic in in, in my view. I I think that the costume looks a little silly with the blue, with the big bright blue lightning bolt. I looked at it as different. I mean, it, it is different. Um I I think it it seems it seems to be a little more family friendly. You know what it's reminding me of? <laughs> that failed Fox series from the 90s, Mantis. I was just thinking that. Yeah. Oh, man. Mantis. Mantis was actually a little popular. Yeah, I had a cult following. I didn't even watch it. I remember seeing the commercials. I think my father tried watching it a couple of times. Yeah. I didn't think he really even got into it. Yeah. Wow. It, it's, it, it, does, it does have that. It does kind of remind me of Mantis a little, too, now that, now that I think about it. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. It, it seems family friendly. Um, um, it might it might gain at least a, a cult following. You know, if it doesn't gain you know traction like the Flash or Arrow. But you know, hey, um, if if uh, if it uh, if it turns out to be popular and if reviews are great and if it catches a catches a great critical buzz, then yeah, I might, more power to it. Yeah, more power to it. I, I might I might check for it and see what it's about. Um, yeah, well, I I like the fact that we're hopefully we'll get more good you know black heroes on on the screen. I mean, Luke Cage set the bar high, so yes. you know DC got to step their game up, man. They're trying, I guess. They're trying so hard. I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, other other headline yeah, here. This one. Uh, Netflix is going to produce a Witcher television series. Uh, uh, the Witcher is uh, going to be based on the series of eight novels uh, written by Andrzej Sapkowski. Uh, that in uh, those novels inspired the video game series, uh, Witcher 3 The Wild Hunt. Awesome game, by the way. Uh, Sapkowski will serve as a creative consultant on the Netflix show. Uh, CD Projekt Red, however, will not be involved in the production of the Netflix series. And uh, there has been no release date, casting, or directors that have been announced as of yet. Okay. I never watched, I never played the the Witcher, so that's all. Yeah, that's all you. Um, I've I've played a bit of part two, um, but my PC wasn't able to run it at run the graphics beyond like low, medium, medium uh, levels. So I just gave up on it. But I did play The Witcher three, and I finished that. Uh, the Witcher three is phenomenal. Um, if uh, if the if the television show matches the quality of the games and the novels, from what I understand, then we are in for a real treat. This could be like. Um, it could be like a, a, a deeper version of Game of Thrones because um, it does have similar vibes with like the like very complex moral moral and ethical themes um, and, and very and very interesting characters like Geralt of Rivia is 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 one of the most interesting video game protagonists I've seen and I'm very I'm very curious to see who they'll cast in that role also um, other, his other two love interests who are main characters um, Yennefer of Vengerberg and uh, Triss Marigold, who are two of his uh, lovers uh, in, in the series. Um, very, very interested in seeing who they will cast in those roles as well. And um, yeah, if it's if it's based on uh, if it's based on the since it's based on the novels, um, I'm interested in seeing what approach they'll take uh, with uh, with with the show. Um, if they'll if they'll just crib from the novels themselves and kind of translate them to the screen, or if this will be or, or if they'll take elements from the books and make it a mostly original. Uh, most re mostly original tale. Hey, I I'm I'm looking forward to it because Netflix has an excellent track record when it comes to uh, TV shows and yeah. and um, hey, hopefully this one will break the video game curse. So 
Shall yeah. see. Yeah. Well, the Dark Crystal prequel series coming to Netflix. Netflix is producing a 10 episode prequel show to Jim Henson's 1982 film The Dark Crystal, which will be which will be titled Age of Resistance. Brian Fro Froud? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brian Frow, the conceptual designer of the original film, will be creating the new characters in the TV show, and Louis Leterrier will be executive producing. Mm. Now, now, have you seen The Dark Crystal? Nope. Um, have you seen Labyrinth with David Bowie and Jennifer Connelly? I remember watching it, but like, just one of those like, times where I was like, okay, I've seen it, and just kind of went, kind of went. Yeah, it's like the Dark Crystal is kind of, well. It came out in eighty two, so it, yeah. so it's like a precursor to that. It's it's like a cool like very lots of lots of great puppetry work from the Jim Henson Company. It's like a dark fantasy, uh, oh, not dark right. fantasy, but like a fantasy series with some dark elements to it. Um, yeah, I remember I remember seeing the Dark Crystal a few years ago. Um, I thought it was good. If it, if if maybe a tad overpraised in my view. I mean, the puppetry work was great, but it wasn't something that I would revisit again. Um, but hey, I mean, if uh, if anything, um, I'm interested in seeing what they'll what they'll produce for for the TV show. If they'll bring back all those pup, those practical effects mm -hmm. and the puppetry work instead of relying on just CG, um, because because uh, because uh, we are seeing uh, you know uh, more practical effects coming back into film yeah. as well as well as TV. So just just on, just on that aspect alone, I'm curious to seeing what they'll produce uh, for the show. So yeah, um, I'm looking forward to it. All right. Yeah. Well, that's it for news and headlines this week, unless you have more. Uh, no, that's pretty much it. All right. Well, it's time for the main event. Yes, the main events. Yeah. We got to add a plural to that. Yeah, main events. Uh, Chicago at the Allstate Arena had two back-to-back uh, -back events this past Formerly weekend. Formerly known as the Rosemont Horizon. Yep. Was that for the, their old name? Yeah. Yep. Formerly known as the Rosemont Horizon. That's where Undertaker won... WWE Championship for the second time oh. at WrestleMania 13. Oh, that's great. Yeah, when he was young and spry. Uh, yeah, so we had two events. Uh, NXT TakeOver Chicago uh, this past Saturday, May 20th, and WWE Backlash this past Sunday, uh, May 21st. Uh, TakeOver uh, did not disappoint. It didn't disappoint. It was, it was in my view, the, the, the superior of the two shows. Yeah, is, I would say it. It was pure wrestling excellence from top to bottom. We'll Backlash break... wasn't bad. And it wasn't bad. Backlash wasn't bad, but we'll get to that in a second. We'll yeah. kind of break down the match matches. Sure. Yeah. Let's, right. go. Let's go. Let's uh, go. Yeah, so TakeOver Chicago, uh, it kicked off with a one-on-one -on -one match between Roderick Strong versus Eric Young. Highly Sandy. impressive match. It was. Very good match. Very, very good kickoff match. Mm. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, and you know, it was it was good. Uh, Roderick Strong, he pulled the win. Uh, he conquered uh, Sanity, uh, got the pinfall win. Um, Rod Roderick Roddy Strong, man, he's he's got immense amounts of talent, man. He does. Yeah. Um, oh, were you familiar with his work? Uh, Not really. I haven't. I really don't. I really never really have a chance to like watch NXT on a weekly basis. So I, the only time I really do watch NXT is when I catch the uh, takeover special so this was actually my first time seeing him I have had her I have heard of him but I had never really watched him mm -hmm. so I was highly impressed with this match and his in his finisher is awesome mm -hmm. so I mean by all means I I, I I thoroughly enjoyed that match. Yeah, and Eric Young, man, uh, I, I kind of like his 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 uh, quasi cult anarchist leader gimmick. Yeah, that's cool too. It does kind of remind me of like the Street Gangs and Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, except uh, <laughs> less neon. Yeah, kind of like that, like or like um, Mad Gear from Final Fight. Yeah. 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 So yeah, yeah, definitely a solid start to a to a great event. Um, two great talents right there, and. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing uh, more in store from Roderick Strong. All right. Next up. Uh, next up is uh, the match of the night, match of the NXT Chicago, as well as the yes. match of the weekend. And this was the WWE United Kingdom Championship match with yes. defending champion Tyler Bate versus Pete Dunne. First off, I want to start off by it was so great to see Jim Ross and great to hear him call that match. And him and Nigel McGuinness actually had, like, great chemistry commentating. Oh. They certainly did. So that was one one um, element of this match that was really, that was um, truly enjoyable, mm -hmm. and other than that, the match was phenomenal. 
Yeah. From, you know, Nigel. I mean, not Nigel, but yeah. Um, uh, Pete Dunn. Pete Dunn was only like 23. Mm -hmm. And then Tyler Bateman, who's up? Uh, he was like 20. 20, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and and the, yeah, this match was just was just like in my view, it's my favorite match of the year so far. Really? Yeah, and like match of the year, match of the year, can you? Yeah, so. definitely. Like, um, there were plenty of uh, it told a great story between the two. Like, there were so many uh, you know, dramatic near falls uh, and finishes. Um, they they busted out some some great moves. Like, there was one move where Pete Dunne gave uh, uh Bate the X Plex outside the yeah. ring, where he where he gave him like a yeah, vertical just super. Yeah, lift the man right on the apron. And yeah. I'm gonna tell you from experience, the apron hurts. Yeah, it's the hardest part of the ring. Yeah, and I, yeah, like and I seen him take. I'm just like, oh my god. Mm -hmm. As much as I miss wrestling, I do not miss that. Yeah, and like Tyler Bate, man, he's just he's just such a amazing talent. I mean, twenty years old, but he wrestles like a veteran. Yeah, yeah, he 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 really does remind me of of like a young Bob Backlund, like in terms of his physique. I can see, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, and his I can see. Yep, and his highly technical wrestling style. Yeah, and and Pete Dunne, oh my God, this dude is a star. Like, yeah, like he's and he's one in the making. I would love to see yeah. him in two hundred five live. Yeah, like, um, not, and not just 205 Live, like on the main roster, like, pursuing maybe like the Intercontinental Championship, or even, hell, even the Universal World titles. Like, I, th I think he's, like, at that level, like, because, like, he, like he's, he, he, play, he plays such a, like, a, like a bully heel so yeah, well. Yeah, like, the bruiser weight. Yeah, the bruiser weight, man. That's such a, that's such a badass name, too. I yeah. love that. Like, um, like, th there was, uh, like there was another moment at the towards the end of moment towards the end of the match where um Tyler Bate he did a, he tried to do a dive a suicide dive uh, 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 between the ropes and Pete Dunne kind of dodged Ooh, over, dodged yeah. him so Bate enough so Bate, to break his fall but yet still like hurt him yeah he kind of crash landed outside the ring so Dunne capitalized by rolling Bate back into the ring hit him with the bitter end finisher yeah. pinned him for the one two three to the joy of the whole uh, All State Arena um, and that uh, hey that was well deserved man very. I'm, very glad to see Pete Dunne be the new UK champ, and I think he's also currently the Progress uh, Wrestling Champion as well. Progress is a British, uh, a Brit UK uh, uh, organization. Oh, okay. So Good for yeah. him, like big things for him. He, he has a bright future. Oh yeah, a bright future. He's he's he'll definitely be like a monster, uh, like a a great strong heel. Yeah. Yeah, Ma two main event talents, man, and. The fact that they're they're both wrestling. I would love them. to have that. I would love to see them have like a Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn type of rivalry. Oh yeah, they could totally fight forever. They can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they can fight forever, and nobody will get tired tired of it. Yeah, man. It's like you know they definitely that's like two opponents that definitely bring out the best in each other for sure. Yes. But yeah, but yeah, if you haven't seen that match, by all means, sit down and watch it. Um, this is it's definitely like the sequel to the the superior sequel to their awesome match back at the UK tournament in January. And and Tyler Bate, man, he, he definitely proved to be a legit champion. He did defend it a few times on NXT. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, phenomenal match. Two phenomenal athletes. Watch that match if you if you can. Uh, match it match of the year so far. So if there are other matches that can top this one, hey, I'll be very su pleasantly surprised. Uh, next match on the card, we had uh, Asuka defending her women's championship against Ruby Riot and Nikki Cross. It was cool. Yeah. Oscar wins again. Wins again. I like Oscar. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, I I love Oscar. Oscar yeah. is just like, she's she's like legit scary, as as like she, she's like this this complete badass buzzsaw of a woman who's like you just would not want to mess with her, in any circumstances. And a couple fun facts too, is that like she 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 not only has the longest longest title reign in NXT history of anybody male or female. Yeah. She's she also her, her undefeated streak also surpassed Goldberg's. Damn. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. Like man, that ended well one seventy. It was like one seventy four. I want to say. Yeah, that sounds about right. It was one seventy something and O for Goldberg. I think Kevin Nash was the one. Kevin Nash was the one because I remember ordering that pay per view. Oh wow! How disappointed were you? I was like, what the hell was this? <laughs> Is this how you do? Yeah. But yeah, Asuka, you know what? It, it, make, it, makes me, it makes me wonder, like, who can actually really beat her? I know that they're building up um, Ember Moon to be the one to... I like Ember Moon. Yeah, Ember Moon. But as far as, like, who can beat Asuka, I can't see anybody right now. Yeah, like... I'm a Natalia fan, but mm, that would be a dope match. It would be a dope match, but 
like I'd rather see Ember Moon or maybe someone or, or maybe someone else maybe talented and also new that we haven't seen before maybe break the streak um, uh, I will I will say that if they do bring if and when they do bring Asuka to the main roster woo, if, yeah, if they if that's they it. that's like, it Man, if they, if they if they I kind of don't want her to be part of the main roster because she'll get caught up in all that total diva shit. Yeah, that's the thing. That's that's what concerns me. Like, I, I hope they don't. I hope they don't like you know try to make her as another make her as another face in the in the in the women's crowd. Like, make her as like a legit badass on the main roster, someone that the that the main roster women cannot beat. And so like then that's when you got to bring someone new that she's never fought before and that can maybe break her streak if anything. Um, I would not mind personally if Asuka got was was promoted promoted to the main roster, still the NXT Women's Champion, much like Paige was, and then she wins either the Raw or SmackDown Women's Championships. I would not mind that. Kevin Owens did it. Yeah, Owen, Owens did it. Like he was well, well he did drop he, the NXT Championship, uh, yeah. but he was still champion when he got was on the main roster. But yeah, uh, oof. I mean, and plus Asuka and Ember Moon, they did have a match of uh, a great women's match too. Yeah, not too long ago. Was it the last takeover? Yeah, it was at the previous takeover yeah. of WrestleMania weekend. Um, I'll, I'll also say this, besides Asuka, a uh, good showing by Ruby Riot. Uh, I think she was known as Heidi Lovelace. Yeah, um, she has Ruby Riot. I like, she has, like, I like her look. Yeah, she has that, like, pissed off Hot that Topic employee. Yeah. Hot, yeah. 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 Yeah, that pissed off Hot Topic employee thing going, you know, with the tattoos and everything. She does have a. She's definitely. She's a, She definitely looks unlike any of the other women on the roster. Yeah, that really. that gives her. She has that unique that her unique style. Yeah, and Nikki Cross, man, she's like a Tasmanian devil, just like complete un, just total id, just like un, unbridled in, insanity. If you yeah, know. yeah. Like she looks like she's been just like Nikki Cross. She has that look as if she's been trained in bar fighting her whole life. Like, that's her discipline. That's what it looks like, yeah. Isn't she part of Sanity as well? Yep, she yeah. is. So, yeah, I mean, hey, uh, a good, good match between all three women. Asuka, still, still the woman, still the champ. Better than Goldberg. Fact. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the next match here uh, for the NXT Championship, you had Hideo Itami facing the glorious Bobby Roode. Good match. It was good. Mm. It was good. It was. I won't put it as any of my favorite Bobby Roode matches, mm. but it was good. Enjoyable. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I did. I, I really did enjoy this match. Um, uh, I, I did like. Uh, I loved it when Hideo Itami hit, uh, hit him with the GTS. Yeah. Uh, the move that Hideo himself invented, by the way, not CM Punk. Get it right, WWE fans. Uh, but like I liked how he hit him with the GTS, but then Rude smartly rolled out out of the ring, so Atami couldn't capitalize to get the three count. Um, it was a it was a very good back and forth. I did want Atami to win, even though I knew that Bobby Rude. I had a feeling that Bobby Rude would retain, because because Atami, you know, he he hasn't had the best of luck on his on his NXT run since he started. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I would like I would like to see him. I honestly would like to see him be the one to beat Bobby Rude. Yeah. Like, because they had a really solid match, and at the end, uh, Bobby Roode capitalized by hitting him with, with the glorious DDT. Yeah. But then he still had he still he still retained Tommy in the in the in the front face lock. And gave him another one. Yep. Gave him another one. Roll over for the one two three to really put him away. Yeah. Um, with the Tommy though, um, I really would like to see him as NXT champion, because um, I know that he's he's been plagued with injuries. He had a, like a, a serious shoulder so, so, shoulder injury, injury which put him on the shelf for like a year and a half. Yeah. And then he had like a neck injury uh, shortly after his recovery, and but but then he's back. He's back now, and um, I would love to, I would love to see him either become NXT champ or NXT should definitely create a secondary title. You know, just to wonder the, the TV NXT. title. You know, all, Bring yeah. back the TV title from back in the NWA days. Yeah, that, that's an excellent idea. Like the NXT Television Championship yeah. or like the NXT Network Championship or something like that. Television champion. Yeah, just because the TV title already has history in. It. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, like 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 something that could something that could be for like for like, you know, talented people that you know. Yeah, a mid card title. Yeah, like a like the a workhorse title. Yeah, the workhorse title. Like that doesn't become the main title because the world champion is a freaking part timer. Yeah, Lesnar. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, um, I would love to see a a, a secondary NXT championship uh, uh, eventually, and, and who knows, maybe they'll give it to a Tommy uh, or someone someone else. But I I would love to see. Atami, you know, reached that 
upper upper level where he should be. You yeah. Know? But yeah, a solid match, solid match between the two. And Bobby Roode, still glorious. I love his theme song. I love his entrance with the piano. It kind of reminded me of Big, the movie with Tom Hanks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. He's been having like WrestleMania caliber entrances. He has. Yeah. On NXT takeovers. He he really has. I mean, so I think like watch, hit, watch. If he ever makes it to WrestleMania, he'll have like a big. He'll have a full fledged orchestra. Oh yeah, absolutely. I can see him totally. But then I want that for Shinsuke. Oh man, like if you can have Bobby Roode versus Shinsuke, like a rematch, like on the main roster. Yeah. Oh, uh, like a violin orchestra versus uh, oh, just yeah. the entrances. Entrances alone, five stars. Yeah. And then you had the the main event of uh, Takeover Chicago with uh, the tag team titles, uh, the authors of Pain, Akam and Razor, versus DIY Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa in the latter match. Love the I love the authors of Pain. Yeah, you know, like not too many big guys can really like, you know, pull off solid matches like that, mm. like they do, but they do. Yeah. And they literally have like little to no wrestling background. That's true, and they're and they're young kids. They're like early twenties, like twenty one, twenty two. Yeah, but they look like they look like thirty. Yeah, and they're, they're freaking. They're the road warriors. They are the new road warriors. Yes, and with, the road warriors are my all time favorite tag team. Yeah, with the Paul Ellering as their yeah. I, yeah, like yeah. I was, I was literally was going, I was going for. Authors of Pain on this one. Sorry, guys. Oh, man. See, I, I, I really wanted DIY. To, it would have been nice. I would have I would have been happy if they wanted, but mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I like I like the Authors of Pain. Yeah. I mean, I, I did like the storytelling in this match as well. I mean, because Authors of Pain, they've really been excellently booked to be like these two, like, big bosses. Yeah. Of the tag division, where it's like, you, you just when you put them down, they, 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 just, they just recover really quickly. Like the Road Warriors. Yeah, it's like it's like they're unstoppable. And like, really, the, the ladder match has had some great spots, like the one where where Gargano and Champa jumped off that tall ladder onto uh, the offensive. Oh, yeah, and both ladders shit and breaking that. <laughs> well, one of the ladders crack, crack. cracked. Yeah. I was like, I didn't know they were made of wood, so I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, it so depends. it depends on what they use. Yeah, it looks really painful though. The way oh god, it does hurt. Yeah, the way Champa landed on uh, one of the authors of pain. Also and then what the final? Then the final spot wherever they were, um, where um, DIY was hold, hanging from the belts, mm -hmm. and then they just woke up and just gave him their uh, double power bomb. The what's it called? The crash course. Oh, oh, the super collider. Yeah, super collider power bombs. Yeah. And then that's when they took the titles. I was like, man. Yeah. These guys, these guys have a future. They, if, they, if they just keep them as a dominant tag team, they be, they have a future. Oh yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing who the next tag team will be to challenge them and maybe eventually take the belts off of them. But I I, I, I but the authors of pain, you know, even though I was chanting for DIY to to win this one, they they've they've out the AOP they've grown on me since they started. Because at first I'm like, I'm like oh it's like gen generic generic uh, powerful badass tag team but then no they, they really pull, yeah they're doing they're pulling off some dope matches yeah they have especially like um their best match i've seen from them was the triple threat tag team match with them versus diy and the revival from the last from um yeah from, i think from the previous takeover yeah that, that was, was a good one. masterful storytelling on that yes. one but um, but the authors of pain took the win, and uh, however, the uh, what with the the moment that really got people talking was Tommaso Ciampa's heel turn. Yeah, where uh, he um, he slammed Gargano Johnny Wrestling into the into the LED board. It kept hitting him in the face with his knee. Then um, then you know gave him like a white noise uh, finisher off yep. the announce table. Threw two red tables below. Boom. Effectively breaking up DIY for good, so Champa is known as who is known as a psycho killer. He went all psycho killer on Johnny Gargano, and now DIY is no more. Uh, definitely, I could definitely see Champa. Champa. I mean, there was there was like subtle hints. I think since the Cruiserweight Classic. I will say yeah, but I will say one thing though. Bad timing with it, because if you watch it. Champa whispered in his ear and then turned on him. Mm -hmm. The camera was just entirely too. The, the, the camera was too close. 
Well, and I saw, I was like, oh my God. Once I saw him whisper, I was like, wait, what's going on? Boom, yep, there it is. Well, it was what made that what made that even more moment even more more interesting was you you know how you see the the watermark uh kind of like, like the yeah the, the water yeah at the end of the show watermark just kind of came up and I'm like and then that's you, it and like I heard something happen because I didn't watch it right away I didn't mm -hmm. watch it the night it premiered I was at a barbecue mm -hmm. but um so then I got the I did get the alert that something happened I didn't really read it mm -hmm. so um, I'm sitting there waiting for it I'm and I'm thinking like the authors of pain just continue to beat them but really badly. Yeah, and then up, uh, that was it. Yeah, so DIY is no more, which is unfortunate because they're a solid tag team. And well, it gives them a chance to build up more tag teams. Oh yeah, and and and, and if anything, like they're both, they're both great singles wrestlers too. Yeah, because um, and yeah, I enjoyed their match during the Cru Cruiserweight Classic. Yeah, and I and I thought that I thought that maybe that was the beginnings of maybe the slow burn of the Champa heel turn because like Champa was very disappointed that he lost. Yeah, but he still stuck by his partner, and then like with the with the losses that they that they received from the revival, yeah, and he then, just got tired of that shit. Yeah, and just, yeah he got tired of it. He's like, hey man, I'm I'm, just, I'm trying to move, make my mark, you know. People, I'm, t I'm sick of the fans ch chanting Johnny Wrestling. What about me? What about the Psycho Killer? That's literally probably the angle that they're gonna go to. Yeah, hey. they're gonna go with. Yeah, and hey, makes sense. So hey, I'm looking. If if, if anything, this will get me to watch NXT on a weekly basis again because I kind of fell off. But I'll, I'll I'll get back on that horse this week for sure and see where they take that storyline. Yeah, so that was your NXT Takeover Chicago roundup, and then uh, next up we got Backlash, which was uh, which had a hard, act, tough act to follow with the Chicago show from yeah, NXT. Did. But um, Backlash kicked off with uh, Dolph Ziggler versus the King of Strong Style, the artist Na Shinsuke Nakamura, the making his known as Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah, although I prefer King of Strong Style. I, I'd say both. Yeah, I know, because he is an artist. He's a majestic man. He's yeah, a majestic he... wrestler. And one of my beef with this match, mm -hmm. it was very, it was very solid. I will say that. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I enjoyed watching it. But my beef with it, Shinsuke is the marquee guy on the Backlash logo. Yet it's the first match. We could have waited. Well, I, I didn't, I didn't mind. I, no, we could have waited. It's like, it's like, all right, let's get this over, let's get this over with. Well. Well, I, I didn't see it that way. I mean, I thought I thought it was a great way to get fans into the show. Like maybe this would be the match to kind of like they set the bar. Been, no, there could have been another shit. There could have been another match. There was other matches that were just as good. Yeah, that could have. But you know, I, I thought I thought it was like a match to kind of set the bar for the rest of the show. But um, I was I although it, it, the, the match kind of went along, at just about what how, what I expected. I mean, Ziggler did dominate most of the match. He took he took control of most of the match. Uh, so Shinsuke was, you know, selling most of Sigo's offense, and, and I thought that was where they were they were going to go with it because, like, up until the build up for the past few weeks, Shinsuke always got the upper hand yeah. on Ziggler, and wrestling law dictates that during the match, if one person gets the upper hand all the time, then the other person has to, you know, return the favor in kind. But um, it was a solid match between the two. Um, uh, the, the fans were very much behind Nakamura. Nakamura chants all throughout. Yeah. And um, at the end... Uh, I thought he was going to at least get a violin, though. It's his, it's his main roster debut. I would have mm. figured he would have got a violin. Yeah, they, they kind of use it for his first SmackDown appearance. Yeah, yeah I remember. Um, but, uh, Still would have been nice. Yeah, but at the end, Nakamura hits him with the Kinshasa, or what formerly known as the Bumaye. Uh, and he... The vicious knee to the face of Ziggler pins him for the one, two, three, and Nakamura gets his first win on the main roster. Actually, a good opponent for Nakamura on SmackDown. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Ziggler's a workhorse. You know, even though I've been kind of, you know, you know, apathetic towards him, I mean, mainly because of like how he's been, you know, kind of booked. Yeah. Um, but but Ziggler, the perfect workhorse opponent for Nakamura. Definitely. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing where they build up Nakamura. I mean, they have. I'm um, starting it now. I'm. Nakamura, AJ Styles, WrestleMania 34. Yes, or 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 no, no, or no, SummerSlam. No, I'll say no. SummerSlam. No, they'll probably do it for SummerSlam, and I wouldn't be happy. But that's a WrestleMania caliber match. Absolutely. All right, Absolutely. so then it's settled. Whatever, uh, or at least give us Nakamura versus Owens. Cause they wrestled. I'll take that for some saying. Yeah, cause they I'll had take... a, they had a great match during Ring of Honor, you can, which you can watch on YouTube. Yeah, um, I'll take that. I'll take I'll take that for some saying. Yeah, and if anything, they got to build Nakamura in in the main in the main event. Make him make him world champion, cause he's a world champion. He's a world class athlete, yeah. and anything less would be uncivilized. So give him the WWE championship. 
because as we'll as we'll get to the main event, if you can give a certain people that's the world title, a Nakamura sh Nakamura should not be left off the list, but more on that later. Uh, next match on the card uh, was the Usos defending their tag team titles on SmackDown versus Breezango, Tyler Breeze and Fandango. I want to give a quick shout out on that match. I had to write his name down, so excuse me. At Nonprofit on Twitter. Um, I will have to say, finally, like the. I love me being a hip hop guy. Mm -hmm. I love how they, the way that they're utilizing hip hop culture, in um, with the Usos. Mm. Like it's just not too like jigaboo coonish or whatever. <laughs> like you know, mm. with Crime Time. Although I did like Crime Time, you know, it wasn't you know stereotypical. Mm. Um, like I just I. I just love how they use how they're using um hip hop culture and nonprofit just said, Well, um R Truth's raps aren't doing it for you. I'm like not at all. Yeah, R Truth. R Truth is that drunk uncle at the party dancing and stuff and he tries to rap. It's like he's a drunk old uncle that whenever he raps he sounds like he's trying to he's like shaking a bottle of Viagra pills at the girls over. <laughs> <laughs> and it just it, I'm just not a fan of it at all. But I love the way that they're using the Usos. Yeah, it's, it's, it definitely suits them. It's like yeah, it's very natural. Definitely. I want one of them sweaters actually. Day one ish. Yeah, I just I was like that shit's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that slogan. Day one ish. It's yeah. kind of like a motivator. Um, this match was actually better than I thought it was. I mean, I, I th at first I was I, I thought that uh, Brizongo's antics would be would be annoying, but it actually played to the strengths of the match very well. It did. Like Tyler Breeze, like he had. What, two or three different disguises? Yeah, it was like one was the the first one was a janitor, then it was mm -hmm. an old lady, and yeah, yeah, it had to be that was that yeah, was, it was right. yeah, it was an old lady. People are chanting, "Let's let's go, grandma!" Yeah, and I tweeted only in professional wrestling. Oh yeah, uh, the, the the funniest spot in the match for me was when was when one of the Usos. I think it was either Jimmy or Jay. I still can't tell the difference between the two. Um, I think Jay has the cross tattoo on his bicep. I haven't looked that too deep into him. Yeah, <laughs> he's but, both look like their daddy. Yeah, but like there was one spot, funny spot in the match where one of the Usos was about to do their signature splash, and Tyler Breeze was laying prone on the ring, and then just when one of the Usos got on a turnbuckle, Tyler Breeze just slowly rolled to the opposite direction. Oh yeah, 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 and he kept doing that back and forth. Yeah, like he would roll away that was like way too far to to make a splash. So yeah. then he he go to another corner. Tyler Breeze rolled the opposite end. I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, they had fun. You can tell that they were having too much fun with it. I'm sure they probably laughed their ass off at, in the back after that one. Yeah. Probably would probably catch it during the episode of Up, Up, Down, Down. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, probably. And, and you know, even though the, and the Usos did retain their tag team titles, but I did, I did, uh, I was pleasantly surprised at seeing the amount of crowd support that the Brazongo got. Because um, I, because I, Tyler, Tyler Breeze is a, is a very talented dude yeah and i think he should he's, he's definitely worthy of upper mid card status like intercontinental u.s championship um i don't think he, I, I think he's way more than just a joke wrestler but i do but he does play his role quite well um, yeah it's like santino morello uh, he, I think Santino he, was very talented, but he just had he he just found his niche as a joke wrestler. He did. He ran with it. He did, and he was genuinely funny. I give him that. Oh, but yeah. but Tyler Breeze, I think he's you no know, much more than that. Oh yeah, they put him against Juice and Thunder Liger. Mm-hmm. They, they had to put him against him for a reason. Yeah, yeah, and that's like a, that's like the, definitely a high compliment for his talent too. Yes. So yeah, Tyler Breeze and, and Fandango, Fandango. You know what? I'm interested in seeing what other antics shenanigans they might they might come up get up to, get up to, and who knows? Maybe they'll eventually become the tag team champions. Yeah, uh, eventually. Yeah. You know, they, so you know, they, if they can balance that comedy and the and the seriousness, I'm for it. Uh, next match here, we've got Sami Zayn versus Baron Corbin. Solid. Mm. It was solid. Although I I did I was expecting Corbin to win, but I was surprised that Zayn won. I'm kind of glad Sami Zayn won because I never see him win. That's true. Like he he calls himself the underdog of the underground, but he he's, he's kind of like the Charlie Brown of the WWE when you think about it. Yeah, but you gotta love him now. Yeah. Like honestly, his theme song is just fun. It is that ska music. Yeah, it was like. Yeah, it just seems like it's just so much fun. Like, every, like you have the time of your life just singing it. Oh, yeah. I knew he was going to do that. 
<laughs> yeah, um, uh, uh, it's a solid match between the two. Uh, Corbin, he definitely has potential being a uh, being a strong uh, monster heel. Uh, one of the signs in the crowd that I that I thought was clever: uh, "Lone Wolf, not far." <laughs> for Walking Dead reference. Uh, um, uh, Sami Zayn, I'm, 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 I am glad that he did get the win because he do, he does need more W's under his belt. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised that he hasn't won a title yet on the main roster. I would expect him to be Intercontinental or U.S. Champion at least. Yeah, you would think so, but yeah. But who knows? Maybe maybe he'll maybe he'll get some gold. They're giving it. I guess they're giving us the underdog. Like he's grind. He's really grinding for it. You know, mm. for, a, for a title feel. Yeah, it's kind of like the male Bailey in that respect. Yeah. 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 That's it. Yeah, indeed. So yeah, uh, Zayn Zayn getting the W over Corbin. Uh, next match, we had the six women six women's tag team match, the welcoming committee consisting of Natty, Tamina, and Carmella versus Charlotte, Becky Lynch, and Naomi. SmackDown Women's Champion. Uh, the welcoming committee did pull the win when Natty tapped out Becky Lynch, who was sporting a, a really cool orange mohawk, uh, beehive mohawk thing thing going on. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I, I, I will say, I will say this. Uh, Natalia, I think she's been hasn't been fully utilized as like. I've been champion. saying that for years. Like, what I've been saying that since she was in developmental. Yeah, what was she Divas Champion at one point? I think she had that, but the Divas Championship was kind of a joke to me. Yeah, it was the butterfly button. And I, and I, yeah. I think like she came in at kind of like a bad time when most of the women when she came in. It was, like, all, it was all about pretty faces and sex appeal. Yeah, it was like the late two thousands. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and Tamina, whoa, she's even more underutilized than Natalia was. I want to see her go against Nia Jax. Oh, that would be good. That would be a great match. Well, it could be like like Tamina. I think they, they they really need to like really build her up way better. Yeah, definitely. Like like build her up as like a serious monster heel. Yeah, someone who's all business. Um, I think like they, how Nia Jax was when she first came out. Yeah, and like like and, and Tamina, she looks like she looks like somebody who has like some like a real personality there, not just someone who's stoic. Yeah. So if they could like play to those strengths to kind of build her up as somebody, somebody unique, somebody that you'd want to cheer for or a boo, that'd be great because like her coming out to crickets or, or dead silence is it pretty is. cringeworthy. It is. Yeah, it's like, ugh, like, man, this is untapped potential there still. And uh, Carmella, you know, she's she's coming up. She's coming up. Little by little, yeah. Yeah, and. She's uh, cute. Yeah, indeed. I, I I think she's actually a, a big cast as a girlfriend yeah. in real life. Yeah. Yeah. Although, like, what was funny was, <laughs> uh, that kind of reminds me, you know, during the um the pre-show for Backlash, uh, James Ellsworth appeared and Booker T, like he 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 was trying to start some shit. Like Booker T was like asking asking James Ellsworth, like, so you and Carmella, is it real? Is it real? And then like um and then um, um Renee Young was like, wait a minute, whoa, what is that hand gesture? And then James Ellsworth kind of like played off what played off what Booker T's response, but uh, I, may have to, I may have to watch. It. I didn't catch the uh, pre. I didn't catch the pre-show. Yeah, it, it was it was a brief moment, but uh, but uh, the whole Ellsworth Carmella thing's a little, you know, it's, friend, right. it's like it's 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 friend zoney. It's yeah. the whole friend zone thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, it kind of brings up painful memories, right? Y'all been there. Yeah, we have been more some more than others. Uh, and uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, don't go there, don't go there now, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, but yeah, you know, the standard boilerplate, boilerplate women's match. Um, I'm very glad to see, to see that Naomi is still the women, women's champion, for sure. yeah, yeah, that too, yeah, so yeah, it is what it is. And uh, next up, we have the U.S. title match, uh, AJ Styles versus the face of America, U.S. champ Kevin Owens. I thoroughly enjoyed that match. Mm. I would say that was, for me, that was my favorite match of, of, of Backlash. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, with, with Owens and Styles, like, I tweeted on the Codex Twitter, like, Owens, Styles, yes. You did. Um, you did. Yeah, definitely, definitely a, a very good match between uh, both both uh, both athletes. Um, although I was not really feeling the, the count-out finish with Owens getting a count-out win, but I it, was okay with it, but no, go ahead, go ahead, but, finish your point. I was like, but it does further their storyline. That's why I was gonna say I I I appreciated it. 
Mm -hmm. Well, appreciate it. I, I was okay with it because of it because of that reason. It furthers their storyline because I can see them going, doing the usual three pay per view mark. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, like everything comes in threes. Yeah, yeah. So uh, AJ Styles, uh, he lost by count out, um, but a very very good match. Um, I will say that with uh, with Kevin Owens, uh, he plays a smarmy asshole heel a little too well. Oh, I did. He enjoys it. Yeah, like, because I remember um, I was watching talk, Talking Smack after the, after the show, yeah. and uh, Owens made an appearance there, and he was, like, just uh, intimidating, just bullying Pete Rosenberg and, um, and Renee Young. Uh, like, he would, he would leave the set, and then he'd come right back and then, like, and, like, get in Pete Rosenberg's face, not saying anything. Then he'd leave, and then he'd come back and do the same thing back and forth. Oh, that's, yeah, great. That's awesome. Yeah, and then like Kevin Owens, like he just has like this very smarmy, very he, ha he looks like a bully. Yeah, he has this. He looks like a high school bully. Yeah, he looks like a he he has like an asshole demeanor to him, but he plays it a little too well, like just just too unnaturally well, like 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 maybe that is him in real life. I, I don't I don't think so, but like, but that's the mark of a good actor and a good heel. So like kudos to Kevin Owens because like he he plays like because like the way the way he carries himself and the way he speaks and the way he like runs down people yeah like un unlike other garden variety heels in wrestling like like watching him speak genuinely like irritates me like like it stirs up feelings <laughs> you in love me, to like, hate him like you just love to hate him it's like oh, I just want to I just want to fucking punch him in the goddamn in his fat fucking face but like 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 I I I'm down, bro. I, I guess. I'm down. Yeah, some, sometimes sometimes it takes you there. Like it, it, that's the mark of a good heel, a good actor, someone who can engender those feelings within you. So like <laughs> that that's a mark of his of his true talent. So yeah, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to seeing more matches between Styles and Owens uh, for sure because they have excellent chemistry. And when you have two world class athletes at the top of their game, you're you're guaranteed gold no matter yeah, what. Definitely. Um, and then you had your buffer match, your second to last match, Luke Harper versus Eric Rowan. Um, Two big hosses going at it. Luke Harper won, so the right big hoss won. Bathroom break. Yeah, bathroom break match. Uh, I will say that uh, I liked Eric Rowan's Mad Max Fury Road gas mask, gas sheep mask combination. Yeah. That was it. Um, Luke Harper, like I said, untapped potential. He, he has, he has, he has star potential there. I mean, he because he's he's a, he's a great in ring talent. Yeah, he is. Yeah, like, and some of his matches with Orton has have really brought that out. And um, with Luke Harper, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what they could do with him. And then, lastly, you had, oh my God, you had your main event, the surprise, the surprise of the century. Yeah. Uh, Jinder Mahal versus Randy Orton for the WWE World Championship. Um. You, you want to kick this off because I don't know where to begin with this. Let's just give out the result. It's all over the internet. It's all it's all over the internet. But but we'll we'll, we'll talk we'll talk a bit about the match a little bit. But um, Jinder Mahal, A.K.A. formerly just this time a month ago or two ago was a jobber to the stars on Raw, formerly the member of Three MB. Yeah. Never forget. Is now. Your WWE World Champion. He was a jobber just a month and a half ago. Now he's your World Champion. He has become the 50th man in WWE history to win the WWE World Championship. 50th. This makes him, uh, some, some historical facts, this makes him the second Indian wrestler overall to win a World Championship in the company. The first being the Great Khali for the World Heavyweight Championship. But this makes Jinder Mahal the first ever uh, Indian to win the WWE Championship, as well as the first South Asian wrestler. Well, actually, no, no not technically, no. Batista was the first, because he's yeah. Filipino, so it makes him the second. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, I see what you can. Yeah. So, uh, Jinder Mahal, a uh, history-making uh, championship win for many, many reasons. Um, I'm surprised that WWE pulled the trigger on this one, that they had the ball to do it. Uh, they did? They did it. Like, I, I was watching, I'm like, they get, I'm sitting there watching, I'm like, they gave it to him? Yeah. Like, that was just my only reaction. Like, they really gave it to him. Yeah. Like, he... Like, and that's, that's all I could say. I literally have... Like, the match was just whatever. Mm-hmm. But, the, what's 
overshadowing like, like the, the match was the simple fact that he pulled it off and they gave it to him. Yeah, uh, Mahal hit uh, hit Randy Orton with his Cobra Clutch Slam, pinned him for the one, two, three in the middle of the ring. Uh, After you know interferences with the Bolly, with the Bollywood Boys, the Singh right. Brothers. Yeah. Yep, and but, and there was one sick spot where Orton like flipped one of the Singh Brothers on the mm -hmm. on our table, and he and the dude landed right on his head. Oh yeah, and then Orton had this look like, Ooh, yeah, I did see that. <laughs> yeah, it was like, damn, Orton, be a little more responsible. Shit, that's his fault though. He could take it. That's his fault. Maybe he could have took his own bump. Yeah, he could have. Maybe he under rotated. I don't know. Yeah, but but yeah, uh, I, I'm I'm shocked. Like 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 uh, there's a maybe there's a couple reasons behind Mahal winning the championship because I know WWE is trying to make a, a active expansion into the Indian market. Yeah, they did. They hired they did hire somebody to oversee that market. So to to bring. You know, yeah, to oh yeah, to venture out into that market. Hey, let's have an Indian champion. Mm, yeah, it's a much much like the great Kali who was their main attraction yeah. too. Um, I will say, like with Jinder Mahal uh, being champion, I mean, for one, like first of all, like the the dude is fucking jacked to the gills. Like you can't. I mean, even I mean, I, I, he he has the look. He he has the look that they're going for, and apparently, um, I think Triple H said in a, in a recent interview that he was very impressed with uh, Mahal's drive and his motivation, because Mahal said that you know he's, you know he's very driven and he knows what he wants in his career, and Triple H was very impressed by that, um, which is partly why they they were giving him a main event run. Um, he's jacked to the gills, even though I'm not sure if uh, I me personally I see him having a title run. Just like Sheamus's, yeah, like a Sheamus. T okay, I could, I could kind of see that. Like, um, all right, we got it. So I mean, um, let's give him this. We'll take it away from him after you know a couple of months. Yeah, I mean, I, I do like the fact that it's something genuinely different. Yeah, and very surprising. Um, although I don't think Mahal, dare I say, deserves the world championship because because of the fact because of the because of the very simple fact that he's been a jobber. Up to this point, pretty much, like he's been pretty much a jobber, and like he's coming out to, to like dead silence crickets. Um, no, he's like one of those wrestlers like you 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 for instantly forget the moment he you he leaves your TV set, and now he's the world champion. But also too, I don't know how you feel about this, but the whole ant the whole anti-American foreigner shtick is beyond played out. I'm sick and tired of that heel shtick. Oh yeah, like I would. It, I it always works, but I just don't even pay it anymore. Yeah, I mean, because Rusev did it, but Rusev, you know, he actually kind of did it well. Um, but and, and Mahal, even though, even though, fun fact, he's actually Canadian, so yeah. he, maybe he kind of Indian, yeah, Indian Canadian. Yeah, um, yeah. His uncle was a wrestler as well. Yeah, um, I forgot. I forgot the name of his. his Me too. Uncle. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Mahal, I, I mean, as I, 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 I like the fact that it's different. That's that's a different uh, different development from WWE. But at the same time. It remains to be seen what kind of champion he would be, or if he'll really step his game up in the ring, or if, uh, or if he'll just be uh, a transitional champion at best, uh, much like uh, Bray Wyatt was, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was listening to uh, there was another wrestling podcast I listened to, the mm -hmm. Solid Monster Sounds Off, mm -hmm. and uh, he made the prediction that. Maybe Jinder Mahal will hold the world championship for like a few months until John Cena comes back, beats and as the great American hero beating the foreign menace, and yeah. then winning his seventeenth world championship in twenty seventeen. I could I could definitely see that happening. I won't I won't be surprised. Yeah, um, or or they could just have Shinsuke Nakamura take the belt off uh, off Mahal. I'm I, all for that. I would love that too. But uh, yeah. From jobber to uh, world champion, how about that? Started medals? from the bottom, now we here. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> oh man, zero to one hundred, real quick. Yeah, yeah, that's. Oh man. Mm. Huh? Yeah. So, uh, yes, this, this is the world we're living in now. Jinder Mahal is your world champion in the WWE. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, like I said, if anything, uh, this might motivate other jobbers or people who are jobbed out on Raw to come to SmackDown. Because if Jinder can do it, anybody, anybody can do it. I wish I could have stayed wrestling. 
I really do. Hey, man, you could. Hey, you know what? You can go back now. You could be a world champion. All you gotta do is get jacked to the gills. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So, no emails this week. And now we're moving on to uh, the question of the week. Mm -hmm. Last week's question of the week was what was the worst movie starring a pro wrestler? Mm -hmm. So, on our Instagram, Orbs Vox, shout out to her, one member of the Party Nerds. She says, not sure, but the best was Princess Bride. I agree, Andre the Giant. I, all I remember was Andre the Giant in that movie, and that was it. That's a great movie. I love The Princess Bride. Yeah. John Haponic says, Southland Tales with The Rock, completely unwatchable. Mm. SB Cabrera 97 says, Suburban Commander was pretty bad. I agree. Yeah. Jessica Concussion says, Mr. Nanny, which was later remade with Vin Diesel, called The Pacifier. <laughs> I enjoyed Mr. Nanny as a kid. Uh, yes. I have not watched it since I was a kid. I will probably watch it again and probably still love it just because I'll go back to being a kid and watching it and tie it with those memories as a kid. Mm -hmm. um, Lotus Star 05 says John Cena's solo movie was really bad but Ready to Rumble was dope. LOL. So I'm mm -hmm. hoping he's saying that very sarcastically. <laughs> and okay. Carly Wynn, Santa with Muscles. Oh, okay. Yeah, another Hogan movie. Oh, okay, yeah, that's plays a lot. Mm. So, one more question. Of the, so this week, another wrestling theme one. What was your favorite heel turn? Favorite heel turn? Uh, my favorite heel turn, um, I gotta go with, uh, I gotta go with Hogan. Hogan at Bash of the Beach 96. And there we are. Yeah. That okay. That that's a very good one. That one's legendary. I would have to say, I would go with that one, and Shawn Michaels turning on Marty Jannetty at the barber shop. Oh yeah, yeah. When he threw him in the window. When he threw him through the window. Yeah. That felt. That was. That felt real. It did. I remember watching that as a kid. kid was... Exactly. I'm like, oh my god. Like, like I thought he killed him. Mm. Yep. As a what, six, seven year old kid, I thought he killed him. Yeah, like wasn't wasn't Jadetti bleeding too? Yeah, they had yeah, they sold that real well. Yeah, man. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, your favorite wrestling heel turn. Let us know. I'll be I'll be up on the uh social medias within the next couple of days. Uh yeah, probably tomorrow. Yeah, probably tomorrow. Yep. Or Friday. Mm. Who knows? Yep. But like I said, let us know. Email us in, codex podcast at gmail dot com. Uh Instagram at Codex Prime Podcast, Twitter Codex Prime Cast, Facebook.com slash Codex Prime, mm -hmm. SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, leave us a five star review. We're everywhere. Yeah, and Google Play. Yeah, I keep forgetting that one. Yeah, you're trying to forget us Android users, son. What about y'all? You got SoundCloud? Yeah, we got SoundCloud. Android is, Android's where it's at, son. That's a whole other podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yes, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching our show. We will catch you on the flip next week. Thank you for your support, as always. Yes, yes, for indeed. For two great years. Mm hmm. And there will be more to come. Exactly. All right. So uh, peace out, nerds. Later.